Man, I can't wait for these items to be next to each other and having my layout look all cute. Let's go and open up our application really quick and see how it looks. Wait, wait a minute. Has this ever happened to you? Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up guys, it's Leo and today we're back with another tutorial and this one we're gonna be talking about CSS Flexbox and Grid and tailored specifically to Material UI. So if you're anything like me, um, up until now, I haven't really sat down and kind of studied how Flexbox and Grid system works. I'm kind of a trial by error. So I just kind of just start throwing up different configuration and hoping that my layout ends up being the way that I have it envisioned in my head. Um, and I decided this last weekend to actually sit down and kind of study it a little bit. And I figured if maybe there might be some other people that are just kind of like me, kind of wanted to make a quick tutorial explaining how Flexbox and Grid works with Material UI. So that way we can all get uh, layouts working just how we want them to be. If you're already familiar with how Flexbox and Grid works, you can go ahead and skip this section. I'll have a uh, little timestamps below, but just in case we have some people that don't really understand how they work, I made a quick little presentation here using beautiful.ai just to kind of quickly explain how each of them work individually. So let's start out by looking at what Flexbox is. So essentially Flexbox is a one directional layout strategy that helps you and provides a more efficient way for you to kind of lay out, align and distribute different types of elements within a container, meaning that you can put different items and you can align them. So like, let's say for example, you want two words to be next to each other. You can put these as flex items within a flex box and it makes it easier to kind of space them out, give them some padding, some margin, uh, maybe even order them separately. So it's really useful for um, say for example, smaller components components or just for small scale layouts. And just as a quick note, in this presentation, we're looking at CSS Flexbox and the CSS Grid. And there's a little bit of difference between the CSS Flexbox and the Material UI Flexbox implementation. For example, the CSS Flexbox allow you to go in the row and the column direction, while Material UI's implementation only allows you to go in row and row reverse. But we'll get back to that a little bit later in the video. Next, let's take a quick look at what kind of properties the Flexbox has. So before I mentioned that we have uh, the Flexbox container as well as the Flex items that are within the Flex container and they have different properties. So a couple of these, again, I'll put a link in the description below that you can go to the documentation. It explains a little bit better and there's a lot of words on this slide, but some that you just need to know is like, for example, display, which kind of just defines that it's a container. We have the Flex direction in which direction is the Flex going to go. For example, row goes to the left to right, row reverse goes from right to left. Uh, we have wrap, whether it allows the items to wrap if necessary. Uh, justify content defines just alignment between in, within the container where the item should go and things like that. And then the item props for the Flexbox is that you can order them in a specific order. So usually it goes in by source order, meaning by from top to bottom, the way that you define them, or you can switch it up and give them a specific order that gives you a little bit more freedom with that. Then you have the flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis. So flex grow just defines the ability for it to grow. Flex shrink is ability for it to shrink, or you can just uh, define flex here, which is just a shorthand for all three of them. And then align self is pretty much just allows you to override whatever the containers uh, align items property is and you align it itself as its item. Next, let's look at CSS Grid. So essentially CSS Grid is a two dimensional grid based layout system. It's uh, pretty useful for kind of larger scale and more precise placements. Um, you might think that a lot of people say like if it's one directional use Flexbox, if it's two directional use Grid, but you can use Grid for one directional uh, layouts. It's really powerful in that it allows you, to, gives you the freedom to kind of do that. And they both really work well together as well. So let's look at some of the properties that Grid has to offer. So similar to Flexbox, uh, Grid also has containers and items. So Flex container as well as Flex items. And a lot of the properties that it has are pretty similar in that you have like your justify, your align items, justify content, place content, things like that, uh, justify self, align self. So pretty much very similar to how Flexbox works. And that's pretty much it for this presentation. Let us get into some code. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Visual Studio and uh, just as a note, I do have a starter project here that I'll put a link in the description below for you guys to follow along. And once we have that, let's get started with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and start looking at Flexbox by creating just a simple Flexbox component. 
And what I'm going to do is just to find this. It's pretty simple right now. And let me actually go ahead and start this up. And I'm going to be using React for this, but I'm just going to be using it all in a single page so that we can kind of just uh, get to see how it all works. And uh, that opened up automatically, but let us actually get our Flexbox component here so that you can actually see what's happening. And then if we go back to our application, you can see here that we have the hello. And let me actually split, the, split this up and so we can work uh, with both of them at the same time. All right, so let's look at this Flexbox component. And if I actually refresh this, this should say hello bump. Okay, there we go. So what is happening in this component? Essentially what I'm doing is I'm just creating a container right now and I'm giving it this border color of red. So just so we can see how the page is structured and we give it at a height of 800 PX, which is a little bit longer than the page, but that's okay. And then I just have this typography component that just says hello bum. And let's see how we can kind of change this uh, to use Flexbox and make it a little bit cooler. But first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys the Flexbox material UI um, documentation and show you guys how useful this is. So again, I'll put a link in the description below to this documentation, but material UI really has great documentation when it comes to these things, especially the Flexbox and the grid components. So pretty much it gives you a bunch of different examples of what happens when you play around with the different properties. So for example, display, the flex direction here, you can see we have the row and row reverse, uh, flex wrap, justify content and it gives you all these examples so if you guys ever just uh, get confused you can go here and just kind of start playing around with different examples and now that we've seen that let's go back to our app and our flexbox here and let's start ch uh, changing some things around so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to actually change this so instead of a typography i'm going to change it to be a uh, flexbox and I'm gonna add a border style just so that we can see where this Flexbox container uh, kind of starts and ends. And one thing that we can do to make sure that this is all working correctly is that we can actually, let's just go ahead and define a flex direction. And so the default flex direction is row, but it also does support row reverse, which just means start at the other end of the row. And you can see here that this should actually be putting our item to the right and having it over here, but it's not. And the reason for that is because actually Flexbox does require you to first go ahead and define that it is a flex uh, display. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that display is equal to flex um, and like this. And so once I save that, now you can see that this allows me to actually have my items within my container grow, uh, shrink and things like that. And again, if you guys remember, flex is just a shorthand for flex grow, flex shrink and flex basis. So just by defining display as flex, that means it kind of gives it a true value to all of those, meaning that, hey, allow all of my items within the box to grow, shrink and do whatever it needs to with its space. And to show this a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a couple of flex items to this uh, flex container. And again, if you remember, if you show display as flex, that kind of tells Flexbox like, hey, this is the container. So then what I can do is I can actually go ahead and copy these boxes here and put it like this, meaning that, hey, these are uh, the flex items within the flex container. And as you can see, this is kind of all over the place. And if we switch this to row here, you can see now that it's kind of correct because again, it goes by source order. So from top to bottom, it will, if we don't specify the order, it will go from top to bottom. So if we have it as row reverse, what that means is that this item here is going to be the first on the very right. But for now, let's switch it up to row and actually go ahead and um, play around with the ordering of this. So let's do, uh, let's put shut here. Let's put world up top, maybe something like this. And then what we can do is you can see now that it's all over the place, but one cool property that Flexbox items allows you to do, is you can actually add a specific order to your flex items. So what I can then do is I want world to be the second item. I want hello to be the first item. I want shut to be the third item and I actually need to write order is equal to, and then I want box to be the fourth item. And you can see that after I save that, even though they're not necessarily in the source order from top to bottom, because I specify the order property, it actually has them now in the correct order that I want them to be. Another pretty cool property that a uh, Flexbox item actually allows you to have in Material UI is you can actually specify the padding and the margin 
for a specific flex item. So for example, if I want the world to have the world war or the world word, oh, that's hard to say, uh, to have one for the padding value and one for the margin value, I can do that and I can add that to every single flex item and they can have different uh, values. So for example, I can have uh, the margin be two for that, but let's just make it one to make it look a little prettier in that regard. And uh, another cool thing that we can do actually is we can actually specify like flex grow, flex shrink properties at the flex item level. So for example, if I were to structure this and say flex grow is equal to one on the hello, what that means is now our container knows so like, hey, I want this specific flex item to take up as much space as there is left over, or at least uh, to grow as much as it can. And the other items just kind of gather their space. And then this one kind of covers the rest of it. We can also start playing around with uh, the justify content as well. So what we can then do is like right now it's kind of like this, but if I were to go ahead and let's remove flex grow and then let me add the justify content is equal to center here. What you'll be able to see is now it kind of centers all of our items and start it from the middle as opposed to the beginning. So that's pretty cool. We can do flex end. So that'll kind of just do the same thing. Like let's start it at the end, but for now let's just leave it at center. And uh, another thing that we can kind of do is one thing that uh, I've touched upon is that we have the align self and align content and these kind of require the component to have a little bit of a set height. So what I mean by that is if I go ahead and set the height to 100 here, what I could then do is I can align my content and then I, or not content, if I align items is equal to flex end, for example, you can see here that now it kind of has more space and align items again, it kind of tells it where to go on the row. So if I do flex end, it goes to the very bottom of the row. If I do flex start, it goes to the top. I can do things like uh, flex or I could just do center, which will center it. And so for now, let's leave this at flex in. And this is uh, kind of, since this is uh, based on the column, it does require it to know of how much height it has or how much space it has left over uh, in the column access. And again, the cool, uh, there's another cool property that you can do on the flex item level and that's called align self. And what you can then do is th this will allow the specific flex item to override whatever the container align items is. So for example, right now it's flex end, but if I do flex start, for example, this means that this specific flex item will actually override the one from the container. And you can see here that it's aligning itself at the flex start as opposed to the flex end with everybody else. And yeah, that's pretty much all there really is to Flexbox. So now we can actually go ahead and let's look at how the grid component works for Material UI. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and create this grid component. So similar to how I had it before, it's just a simple container with the distance of large. And then what I need to do is instead of Flexbox here, I am going to get my grid component and that should be able to refresh this. And now all we have is just the outline of the entire container. And as you can see here, you can actually, one cool thing is you can actually specify the container or the grid to have a specific component uh, tailored to it. So for example, here I'm doing grid component is container, but I don't actually need to do that. What I could actually do is it has a, uh, it has two Boolean values uh, of component or item. And these can be worked together. So you can have a grid component item, not component, oops, uh, container. So grid can have these two kind of values where it's container and item. It can be one or the other or both. So these uh, work together. But for now, I'm going to just leave it as a container like this. And let's go ahead and actually add our first couple of items here to our grid container. And you can see here that we've added three items and these are pretty much just simple little hellos. And I've added the border style solid so we can see kind of where each of them are. And as you can see here that they're pretty much in a row. But the interesting thing about this is that it goes all the way to the bottom. And the reason for that is because the default align items is stretch, meaning take up as much space as you can. And before we kind of start playing around with this, let's actually go and look at the grid documentation. And so similar to how we looked at Flexbox, as you can see that their documentation is also really, really good. And it gives you a lot of different examples, such as like spacing, kind of gives you the basics of your grid, as well as these things called grid properties. So if you're not familiar with grid properties, it pretty much allows you to set different breakpoints. So for like extra small screens, small screens, medium screens, large screens, and then you can define different sizes. So for example, it's all, 
it by 12. So an entire row full width is 12. And then you can kind of split it up by different pieces as long as it adds up to 12. So that's really cool. Um, and then you can also have, this is my favorite part of this entire document. And it's this interactive piece right here. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to kind of create different configurations for your container and see how the items within it should look. So for example, if I want everything centered in a column, I can do uh, direction column, justify content center, align item center. And you can see that it gives me this example here of what my item should look like on my page. And this is really powerful. And again, there's a bunch of different uh, properties that you can use with grid containers, but um, these three are the most important. And these are the three that I usually use the most. But now that we've kind of looked into that, um, I'll also put a link in the description below to that document just in case you guys want to go over there and play around with it. But let's get back and see what we can do on our application. So if we actually go ahead and so for now, I have uh, two different things. So I have the direction is row, justify content is center. And then I have three different items of hello uh, with the border style of solid. And so you can see here that now they've been centered. If I go ahead and align items is equal to center, this will then override the default of stretch. And where did that go? Okay, there it is. It kind of, let me actually make that flex start so that we can see it at the top. And so you can see it's now at the top, it's in the center. And the, again, the default for align items is stretch. So if I do remove, if I do set this to stretch, it kind of goes back to how it was before. Um, and so yeah, pretty cool, really useful. And as I touched upon really quick is the cool thing about grid items is that you can actually specify different breakpoint values. So for example, excess is equal to four. And so again, what these do is it pretty much just splits it up and it gives it a width of depending on how you can split up the entire 12, uh, value of the row. So this will pretty much give this item four spaces of the 12. This will give this item five spaces of the 12. This will give it one item of the 12. And the reason that this is kind of out of the box is just because it, we're pretty zoomed in right now. So that's why um, it was out. But if I change it to two, you can see that it works fine. And one thing to note is that this kind of works in a left to right manner. So what, what do I mean by that? So for example, if I make a quick note here, oops, I can't make a quick note, but pretty much what this means, if I go ahead and define this as MD6, what this means is that all of the, so XS is gonna take up four places and then all of the sizes up to MD are also gonna take up four sizes. So pretty much what I'm saying here is XS is equal to four. So then it pretty much means SM is equal to four. And it's the same way the other uh, the other way as well. So it also continues. So that means once it gets to MD breakpoint, it's gonna say MD is equal to six. But even though we don't define it, this also means large is equal to six. And so it kind of works in that regard. So if I just leave it as XS, that means that small, medium, and large breakpoints all get uh, four kind of units of measurement. And this is really powerful later on when you can kind of construct different types of layouts per screen size. So then you can use different breakpoints to kind of give it different space values and things like that. So for example, if you want it on the mobile phone to look a certain way as opposed to on a website, um, you, can do, you can play around with these breakpoints and it makes it pretty easy to do. And let's keep playing around with this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change some of these values around. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch it to a column. I'm going to justify and align items of stretch. So I went ahead and actually removed the uh, border around it. And the reason for that is I want to show you this spacing prop here. And so if I remove spacing, you can see that the words get closer together. And if I put one, then that means they kind of, they start to split up a little bit. So this kind of lets you uh, put little margin and padding in between your items and like three and you can just keep going as high as you want and so pretty much what it allows you to do is it allows you to give a consistent spacing to all of the items within your container and now the interesting thing about this is if I actually go ahead and re-add the borders and add do a little couple of changes here so now we change the direction to column center and stretch you can see now that we have this side and then we have this side as well and then you can see that these are in the center and it's working correctly in the column respect and one interesting thing to know is you can actually have containers within your container. And so what we can then do is actually, if we actually go ahead and implement it like this, now what we're saying is we have the same kind of setup here of column center and stretch and things like that. And then we have our first item, which is just taking up 12 spaces. So that's this, uh, 
this side over here. And then what we can then do is we, as you can see here, we also have this grid item and then we have a container of, uh, and then we wanna kind of like switch up the values for this specific container. So what I'm saying is for this column over here, I actually want it to be another container with the direction of row and justify and align items of center and with spacing of three. So now you can see it's in a row as opposed to the column format that we had defined in the parent container here. And one of the cool things that I mentioned earlier, so right now you can see that I have it split up between items. I personally like to keep it this way because it kind of gives the spacing a little bit better. But what, one thing you can actually do is you can actually combine the two and have access to both of their properties. So what I can then do is instead of having an item and then a container within it, I can combine it to a container item, have all of the access to all of the container props, but I can also have access to the item props, which is giving it these property values here. So if I do something like this, you can see here that now now it's a little bit different and the reason for that is because we don't have we aren't giving this enough space so if we give it uh, eight space you can see here that actually it still has the direction row the justify content center align item center uh, different spacing values so I can change this to three or two things like that and I also have access to breakpoints and you can play around with that just again be careful with spacing that's kind of one of the things that I've always got a little bit confused on so um, that's why I like to do it the other way but this works as well and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to this video. I hope that uh, this helped you guys understand CSS Flexbox and Material UI Flexbox and Grid a little bit better. I'm glad that I took this weekend to kind of study it a little bit more and kind of come up with this tutorial so that I can help other people that may have just been doing it the way that I was doing it, which is just by trial and error. Let's just throw a bunch of different configurations and hope that it ends up the way that I've been expecting it to. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks. Thanks.